Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Denise would like to introduce you to Stephen Nisha, whose fake account on Facebook was deleted before I started making this video. So, as before, I had to retrieve our conversation from settings and so, very annoyingly, it's upside down. Hi there, Denise, he said. Thanks for accepting the request I sent. How are you? Good morning, said Denise. I'm fine, thanks, but I don't recognise your name. Have we met? Oh no, he said. I came across your profile on my friend's suggestion here on Facebook, so decided to send a request. Literally, looking for someone to chat with. Do feel bored a lot of times. It's nice to meet you, said Denise. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you, he said. So, where are you from, Denise? I live in Guildford, she said. Oh, amazing, he said. You're from England. Or you just reside there? Yes, it's in England, she said. Where do you live? Yeah, I know. But do you just reside there? Or you were born there? I'm Birmingham, UK. But I reside in California. Why do you want to know? Asked Denise. Are you looking for someone from somewhere else? Oh no, I just wanted to know. That why I asked. It's a very strange question, said Denise. Literally no one has ever asked me that before. And I'm 76. And I'm younger than Denise, but nobody's ever asked me that either. And I don't suppose anyone's ever asked you. Well, not the instant you met, online. They might have done after a while, because it's one of those things that we're all curious about. How long did you live in Birmingham? She continued. Then I'm sorry if I did, he said. I'm 65. I was born in Birmingham, but shortly, when I was six, and my dad was no more by then, me and my mum moved to California. According to her... She wanted a change of environment. So you've lived in California almost all your life? Yes, but I do travel a lot. Oh, you do? Do you? said Denise, mocking what he'd said. Obviously, that went straight over our man's head. Tell me some of the places you've been to, she asked. Oh, OK, he said. I've been to different countries of the world for tour, work or other similar purposes. Canada, Brazil, China, Israel... Germany, Malta, Afghanistan, Hong Kong, Philippines, Guyana, Belize, Pakistan, Poland, Greece, Denmark and also Norway. My goodness, said Denise, you really have travelled a lot. What's Guyana like? And I'm one of the few people that you'll ever meet that's actually been there. And to be fair, he did give her a sensible answer. I'm not sure I even know where Guyana is, said Denise. Guyana, he said. It's the northern mainland of South America. OK, she said. What's it like there? Well, it's a poor country, but it does have some beautiful places you can go for sightseeing and you'd love it. The only place on that list I've been to is Norway, said Denise. My late husband and I went on a cruise. What do you do if some of that travel is for work? Smiles. That's great, he said. My job? Take me around the world. Well, I'm a drilling operation manager. So I do get contracts from different countries. What kind of drilling? asked Denise. Oil wells, he said. Sounds exciting. Well, currently I'm in the Gulf of Mexico for work. I'm on a contract with B&L Oil Company in an oil rig here in the Gulf of Mexico. The duration of my contract was for a year and a half, which is 18 months. He said that, not me. I'm sure that most of my viewers know that a year and a half is 18 months. And I've been here for 15 months now, so my contract would be over in three months. Are you still there, Denise? Sorry, I got distracted and I'm going out soon. I always get the bus into town on Friday morning. Where are you in the Gulf? And our man had done a bit of homework. I'm in an oil rig on the Gulf of Mexico and the closest shore is at Texas. So where do you head to on Friday mornings? I just told you I'm going into town, said Denise. I was to my shopping on Friday mornings. I have to go now. I look for you when I get home, probably at lunchtime. Oh, OK. Now I get it, he said. OK, text me and I would surely reply. Smiles. And although, as you've realised, our man has done a little bit of homework, as soon as you start asking him questions, his story unravels like a very loose ball of string. I'm home, said Denise a bit later. Hi, I'm here. Was at work already when you texted. I'm in my office now. Are you still there? I'm just sitting down with a cup of tea. Oh, OK. I'm 
setting up some files. It would take me a couple of minutes and I'll be back. OK? OK, said Denise. I'm sorting out a pile of old photos now. Hi, Denise, he said later that night. I'm done with work now. How are you? Hi there. I'm fine, thanks, said Denise. What were you doing at work? That's nice to hear. I was at the operation room almost all day. What's the operation room? asked Denise. And this is where his story starts to fall apart. I was supervising a drilling operation that was going on. You're drilling a new well? Yes, he said. How long does that take? That doesn't really tell me what the operation room is, though. The operation room is where the drilling takes place, and it take up to about 25 days to totally drill a well. You have a drill inside a room. How big is the drill? Not a room. That's how we call it here. Oh, OK. So what are you doing at the moment, he asked. Standing in the airing cupboard. What are you doing at the moment, said Denise. I'm in the cabin, just relaxing. Do you have your own cabin, she asked. Yes, I do. What will you do once you've finished drilling this well? We drill more wells. Anything we're to find a trace of them. How do you decide where to drill, she asked. But I would be here till my contract expires, question mark, he asked. Why are you asking me, said Denise. In fact, if you've been there for 15 months and it only takes 25 days to drill a well, what are you doing anyway? Sorry, it was a typographical error and I don't really get your question. You just told me you were supervising drilling a well that should take 25 days to drill, but you've already been there for 15 months. And she copied and pasted the bit where he said, I've been here for 15 months now. And I also said, we drill different wells. Not just one, he replied. So you're drilling lots of wells in the same place. It takes 25 days per well, he said. You've drilled 14 wells in the same place. Not the same place, he said. Where are the others, she asked. We have geologists who determines where to drill a well. Yes but you must know where you drilled them, surely. You did say, I've been here for 15 months. Sounded as if you've been on the same rig for 15 months. And here we go. Now he's going to get his knickers really twisted. The platform was built here because the Gulf of Mexico is an oil centre. And in the rig, and we have in a previous video, discussed the difference between a platform and a rig. I think it might be an interview that I did with Neil. And in the rig, we have equipment to drill oil wells and also pipes to take them from under the sea. So when the geologist discovers areas where oils are located, then we connect our drilling equipments and pipes from under the water to the determined location. You get a special gold star if you can understand that. We drill 1.5 wells per month. Are you still there? I'm sorry, I didn't understand that, said Denise. You mean you send your drills down long pipes to drill holes away from the platform? How would you drill a well that's, say, 20 miles away from your platform? It seems you're getting more interested in being a drilling engineer, said our man, who clearly wasn't a drilling engineer. If you really want to know everything about it, then I would have to show you, not just typing words. It won't give you a better explanation to your questions. Well, that's for sure. He can't. I'm interested in learning about what you do, said Denise. Oh, would have to see it by yourself, he said. So tell me said Denise. How do you drill a well remotely, please? Sorry, I made another mistake, he said. You're an experienced drilling engineer, replied Denise. It should be easy for you to explain it. By the way, what's the name of your platform? And as we've realised in the past, all oil platforms have names. Apart from anything else, they're written in very large letters on the helipad. But I gave an explanation, he said. But you're still going further. That's why I said I would take you on a tour if you like. I work with B&L Oil Company, as I said earlier, but you haven't even told me about your profession. I was an accountant, said Denise. I ran my own business with my late husband. We did accounts for individuals and small local businesses. So aren't you still running your business, he asked. I know, I retired over 10 years ago, said Denise. Actually, it's almost 15 years. It's amazing how time flies. Smiles, he said. But I thought you ran your own business. So did you sail it out or you just shut it down? I did run my own business, said Denise. That doesn't stop you retiring 
And yes, we just closed it. Oh, OK. Now I understand better, he said. So what business did you own before? Before what? said Denise. I mean, your business. I told you, said Denise. I ran an accountancy business with my late husband. Like, what were you selling? he said. Goods or services? Oh, FGS, said Denise. I ran an accountancy business with my late husband. We did accounts for individuals and small local businesses. Oh, OK, I get it, said our man who'd just Googled what is accountancy. So, well, tell me, what about your kids? I have two children and four grandchildren, she replied. Oh, that's awesome. Two sons, you mean? Or a son and a daughter? I mean your children. One of each, said Denise, with three grandsons and one granddaughter. Oh, OK. Well, I only have my daughter, Lucy. I was 48 when I had her, and she came like a blessing into my life, and I cherish her so much. She only 16, turning 17 this year. OK, said Denise. I assume you weren't married to her mother. I've just realised what time it is. I'm off to bed. Good night for now. OK, talk tomorrow and sweet dreams. Good morning, said Denise the following morning. Good morning. How are you today? Denise ignored him. Good afternoon. I'm just making some lunch to save you asking. Tomato soup and toast. Smiles, he said. Oh, OK. I'm in a meeting now. I can't say much. I'll text you when the meeting is over. Hi, Denise. How are you? I'm here now. Hi, said Denise. I'll just finish doing the washing up. I think I'll make myself a nice cup of tea. Well, I'm sitting here drinking coffee. What's the name of your oil platform? asked Denise. Remember, we know that all oil platforms have names. B&L, he said. I thought said that already. I thought that was the company you work for, said Denise. My Albie's great nephew told me they all have names. He said the one he works on is called Lady Godiva and they're all named after women. That isn't true, folk. Denise was trying to wind him up to see if she could get him to come up with a fictitious name. She failed, obviously, because they never understand what you've said. The rig, he said, has the same name with the company. Both can't have different names. Oh, OK. You mean they have lots of rigs all with the same name? Isn't that confusing? Uh, Scammer was confused. That's not what I mean, he said. OK, what do you mean then? And here we go. I mean, an oil rig has the same name with its company. There are many different rigs here on the Gulf of Mexico from different company. I don't know if you're getting what I'm trying to say now. No, I don't think she is, mate, because I don't think you've got any idea what you're talking about. You mean, your company only owns one rig? Yes, he said. It works like this. When drilling wells... The geologist discovers the location for the platform to be built and after a certain period of time of drilling, if no oils are found within a specified distance, the platform would be left and then the work is over on that area. The company would then have to get another location that would also be determined by a geologist and then another platform would be built there. Oh dear, I know any oil rig workers or any oil company employees are laughing like drains at the moment. Imagine all those multi-million pound abandoned platforms because they couldn't find oil. How long would it take to know if oil isn't found? asked Denise. So please, if really getting tired of explaining after a really long day at the meeting, and I just hope you understand what I'm trying to say. If only you understood what you were trying to say, mate. It can take any time, and that's not my department. I'm not a geologist. I'm only an operation manager, so I can only say what I know which apparently isn't very much. And this is all I know, he added. You're an experienced operations manager and you don't know, said Denise. Try something a little bit more believable or have you had too much to drink? And when you've sobered up, you can tell me if you're on a rig or a platform because you've told me both. Our man, of course, didn't know the difference. Not only did he not know the difference, he was prepared to say so. A rig is also a platform, he said. And if you don't get a better understanding from my explanation, you can check it on the internet. OK, I'll tell you what. Let's check it on the internet. Here we go. 
And here is one of those short explanations. The short explanation, it said, is that an oil platform is a permanent structure that is fixed to the floor of the ocean, and an oil rig is a movable platform that is moved from place to place by a barge and then secured to a temporary location. There's probably some crossover, and I'm sure that an oil rig engineer will comment for us, come on dark night, you tell us what the real difference is. Back to the action, and our poor beleaguered man said, and I really don't know why you keep on asking about this. Can you tell me why? Because I'm interested to learn from a professional, said Denise, dream on Denise, and I've done some googling to check it on the internet, but thanks for the hint. Let's talk about something else. Oh, OK, that would be OK, said our relief scammer. So, you know, that old classic question, when in doubt. So, what are you up to at the moment? I've just finished chopping up them fossilised mammoth in the cellar, said Denise, and I'm drinking tea. What are you up to at the moment? Nobody's ever spotted that fossilised mammoth, but I live in hope. That you weren't up to when you asked me ten minutes ago, continued Denise. I'm drinking coffee and relaxing. So, tell me, you know, that old scammer classic, do you live alone or with someone? Denise felt an obtuse answer, was the order of the day, and replied, yes, I do. Oh, OK, he said. So then, why are you the one stressing yourself at the kitchen? Or you just love to cook? I don't remember saying I was stressed, said Denise. Oh, OK. That means you love cooking, right? I've been cooking for years, said Denise. That's nice to hear. You're a great cook, I guess. Denise thought she'd mimic him. And I really don't know why you keep on asking about this. Can you tell me why? Oh, is it wrong to ask you about that? Said our man, who didn't spot that she'd copied and pasted one of his own answers. So she did the same again. I can only say what I know. And this is all I know. Oh, he said, having reread her answer to his question about did she live alone or with someone. Do you mean you live alone? Denise copied and pasted him again. But I gave an explanation, but you're still going further. You just said, yes, I do. And nothing else, he said. Denise copied and pasted again. And I really don't know why I keep on asking about this. Can you tell me why? A man, again, failed to realise that she'd copied him and answered, Because you're very beautiful. Your smile is enchanting. That's very kind of you, said Denise. And you know he's got that list, so here we go again. What's your favourite colour? Purple pomponium, said Denise. Do you know what? We need a range of romance scammers. Paints, don't we? We can all repaint our living rooms. Purple pomponium. Do you know? I can't take my eyes off your pics, he said. She's only got one. I guess you're from a family of angels. Oh, what a flatterer you are, said Denise. Purple is a very nice colour. It brings romantic energies. Oh, yes, said Denise. My Albie loved it too. That's nice. I love it too. I love white, blue and red. But I love purple for ladies. OK, said Denise. I'm not flattering you. I think your mirror must have told you that a million times. I can say you're the most beautiful woman in the world, in my opinion. That's very kind of you, said Denise. Have you been to the States before, he asked. I've been to Florida and Alaska, said Denise. If I could make a wish, I'll wish to be where you are this minute. I'll put the kettle on then, replied Denise. But I'm not Superman, he said. You'd have to get on a plane, replied Denise. Yes, you're right. Can you permit me to kiss your photo? I want to get your permission, if it makes you happy, said Denise. Thanks, it makes me happy and put a smile on my face. But I also hope it put a smile on your face, because that's what I would like to do when I meet you in person. I really appreciate. Does that mean you're going to come to Guildford? Asked Denise. Tell me, he said. Have you been in a relationship since you lost your husband? I don't think that's any of your business, said Denise. 
Yes, I can come on my vacation, he said. It would be lovely to meet you. I ask, he said, because I like you. Well, then you should have asked her if she's in a relationship now. My vacation is October, he said. How long do you get for your vacation, asked Denise. Five weeks. That would give you plenty of time to come here. You could go to Birmingham and visit the place where you used to lie. Whoops, she genuinely did make a mistake there. Live, she corrected herself. Freudian slip. Apologies. Yes, I really want to know you better, he said. Every part of me is singing praises of your beauty, if you say so, replied Denise. Do you love music, he asked. I like choral music, said Denise, reverting to Celia, because she knows they don't understand it. My phone is ringing, she said. Well, it really was. OK, I'm back, she said a bit later. So who ring you? I guess you're busy. A friend, said Denise. You've a best friend? asked our 12-year-old, I mean our 65-year-old. What a strange question, asked Denise. Are you 56 or 5? Oh, 65. Like, seriously? That's funny, said our 65-year-old. A lot of the time you're out like a little kid, not a mature man, said Denise. I told you earlier, I want to know you better. I just ask. Well, ask like a mature adult gentleman, not a teenage kid, said Denise. That's rude, said our offended teenage kid. No, it's not, said Denise. It's true. No one's asked me if I've got a best friend since I was in junior school, and you haven't told me what kind of music you like. I like country music, he said. Who's your favourite artist? asked Denise. Alan Jackson, he said. I don't think I know him, said Denise, but I don't listen to country music. Dolly Parton, he tried. At least I've heard of her, said Denise. Kenny Roger, I also like blues. Who's your favourite artist? I don't really have one, said Denise. I don't really listen to contemporary music. What are the things you like and the things you dislike? He asked. Oh dear, mate. I like a man who can have an interesting intellectual conversation. I dislike a man who asks childish questions. Is that all? He said. OK, well, she'll fill in the blanks. I also like yogic chair dancing and international rally dancing. I dislike existential existences and polymorphic randomism. What do you like and dislike? Like honesty and respect, he said. I dislike rudeness, disrespect and lies. Don't be idiotic, said Denise. Those aren't likes and dislikes. Who on earth would like rudeness, disrespect and lies? Try again. OMG, he said. You just being rude. OMG, said Denise. You're just being stupid again. You like using offensive language, he replied. You like asking childish questions and giving stupid answers. I prefer a mature adult conversation. I'm sure I've already told you that. I don't think he's good to use offensive language, he said. I don't think he's good to act like a baby instead of a mature gentleman. Anyway, the choice is yours. Have a proper adult conversation or go away. I can't be bothered with a mature gentleman who acts like a child. Denise, I think you can start an adult conversation. We ain't fighting. I've tried several times, said Denise. You give childish answers or garbled rubbish. Oh, sorry, but you can start now, he said. I'll believe that when it happens, replied Denise. Tell me some of the places you've visited with your work. I've visited the Netherlands, he said. I worked with Tulip Oil Company before. Which part of the Netherlands? asked Denise. South Holland, he said. Well, at least that's in the Netherlands. Give him some credit. Where else have you been? asked Denise. You must have worked in lots of places. Hague, he said. I thought you asked me this yesterday. I've been to Canada. I probably did, said Denise. But I doubt if I got a sensible answer. Where in Canada? Anyway, I've just seen the time. I'm off to bed. Montreal, he said. Good night. Sweet dreams. Good morning from here, Denise, he said the next afternoon. How are you? And how's your day going? Good afternoon, she said. So the only places you've been to for work are South Holland and Montreal. I thought you'd have been to lots of interesting places. You! Tell me about yourself, he said. You've been so curious about mine 
and I don't know anything about you. What do you want to know? asked Denise. Hi, Denise. Sorry, I received an urgent, so I had to be present there immediately, which is scammer speak for mummy called me for dinner, so I had to go. Can you send me at least a phone of yourself? Why would I send you a phone? asked Denise. Oh, so sorry, he said. It was a mistake. Yes, we knew that, mate. I meant a photo. All together now, ladies and gentlemen, if you give me your address, I'll post one to you. I'm sure Benji put my photo on here. What address do you want? He asked. And please, who is Benji? Wherever you want me to post them to, said Denise. Yes, where you work? I don't mind. Benji's my grandson. You can send your photos to me on here. Or on WhatsApp. Aren't you on WhatsApp? I don't know what a WhatsApp is, said Denise. I have one of them digital cameras. Benji prints my photos for me. So you mean you don't have a photo of yourself on your phone? I don't have a mobile phone, said Denise. I assume that's what you mean. Oh, OK. So you're making use of a PC? I've got an iPad, said Denise. Oh, OK. Do you have a Gmail account? We can chat on Gmail. I'd love to see a photo of you. Give me your address then, said Denise, giving him her email address. OK, he said, and gave her his email address. Here is my email address, he said. Yes, it is, replied Denise. I sent you a message. Please check. I can't see an email from you, said Denise. Check your Gmail chat, he said. I sent an invite. Oh, I thought you meant you were going to email me, said Denise. And so, of course, inevitably, they moved to Hangouts stroke chat. Over on Hangouts, that man really got into his stride. So, what are you doing at the moment? Screaming at the banshee under the sofa, said Denise. What are you doing? I just went to get coffee. I'm now sitting down here relaxing and texting you. And oh joy! He'd read at least part of what she said. Why are you screaming? Denise ignored him. Good night and sweet dreams, dear. Good morning, said Denise. Actually, it isn't that good. It's raining. Well, at least the heat wave was over. Oh, so sorry, he said. Are you feeling cold? Rain is good for the garden, said Denise. Yeah, that's true. If you were cold and I was there, I would have made you feel warm. That's very kind of you, said Denise smiles and here we go again so what are you doing at the moment standing on one leg trying to rescue the moth rat from the curtain rail said denise what are you doing at the moment well it's still very early in the morning here so i'm still in bed he said oh silly me doesn't remember where you are i need more tea is it texas yes well i want to let you know that i like you since i came across your profile and I saw your beautiful smile. It attracted me all of a sudden and gave me a really strong drive to get to know you. I just couldn't stop myself. Your smiles are so attractive and touching. And you also do have a charming and I guess soft pink lips to go with the smiles. That's very kind of you, said Denise, applying the chapstick smartly to her lips. Thank you, he said. So tell me, do you love sports? No, I'm useless at sport, said Denise. Oh, OK. How do you feel when someone upset you? And what will you do to calm yourself down? Please, 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 ladies and gentlemen, tell me that nobody that you've ever met has ever asked you that. At least, not until you're in a long-term relationship and they've found out the answer. Why do you want to know that? asked Denise. Are you thinking of upsetting me? If you think it's clever to do that deliberately, you have a warped sense of humour. Men. Oh no, it's just a casual question in getting to know you, said our man who'd purchased the list from his mate and really hadn't read it properly. Tell me your own answer then, said Denise. Please, it really do hurt me when we argue. I just want us to have a good understanding of each other. Tell me your own answer, said Denise, and please think before typing in future. Well, I do feel unhappy for that moment. Go to a quiet place and listening to a cool music that will calm me down. OK, she said. So, what about you then? I'm a very free and meek person. 
If you say so, said Denise. I don't like argument, because I'm not good at it. And my Alby didn't upset me, added Denise. I never mean to upset, and was never planning to, in the future. That's good, said Denise. I just wanted to know you more, and I think you can only know more of a person when you ask questions. Yes, said Denise, about their life, their careers, having a proper conversation. When someone says something, you answer them, ask a question about what they've said. Not by typing random questions. It sounds as if you're working your way down a list. I can't imagine why she would have thought that. What would tell me more about you is why did you decide to become a drilling engineer? So, our man thought he'd better answer. Before becoming something, you must love it first. My dad was an engineer, and I always wanted to be an engineer one day. So when I grow up, I decided to become a drilling engineer. It's just something that I loved to be. A dream that I always wished for since a very young age. OK, said Denise. Did you go to university? Yes, I did. I studied petroleum engineering and owned a master's degree. Are you still there? Where did you go to uni? I didn't go to university, she said. I went to college to study accountancy, the old Guildford Tech. I graduated from Harvard University, said our man who's never been near one. Accountancy is a good profession. How's the climate? I guess you're busy. We've got to get back to you. The climate's standard for Northern Europe, said Denise, especially for an island surrounded by ocean. How's your climate? Our man clearly consulted some kind of weather site. Warm, he said. Wind, south, at 14 miles per hour, stroke 22 kilometres per hour. Humidity, 84%. How's the humidity? I watch in the news some part of England is very hot. The heat wave was last week, said Denise, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. It's much cooler now. I have no idea what the humidity is. Oh, OK, he said. So what are you doing at the moment? You know, if in doubt. I'm supervising drilling, he said. Sounds like you need to concentrate, said Denise. Sorry, I'm supervising drilling. I'll get back to you. How's the drilling going? asked Denise the next day. Have you found oil? Yes, I think you should know before a rig is set up, he said. Oil has already been found in that location. I work offshore and will drill up to 25 wells every month. How's your day going? And if you're starting to feel confused, he's just going to get worse. It was going better until you confused me again, said Denise. So you stay on one rig and keep drilling lots of wells in the same place. Why do you need to do that? That's how it's done, he said. How did I confuse you? I don't understand why you keep drilling lots of wells in the same place, said Denise. That's why you're not an engineer, he said. No, said Denise, but you are, which is why I'm asking you, so you can explain it to me. I think, replied our man, many people confuse production equipment with a drilling rig, but a drilling rig is only on location while the well is being drilled. Wells usually drilled in only weeks or months. While they can be produced for several years, the well is created by drilling a hole 12 centimetres to 1 metre, 5 inches to 40 inches in diameter, into the earth with a drilling rig that rotates a drill string with a bit attached. After the hole is drilled, sections of steel pipe, casing, slightly smaller in diameter than the borehole, are placed in the hole. Thanks, Google. That doesn't tell me why you're drilling lots of holes in the same place. I'm only a drilling engineer, he said, so that's not my field, having confused himself as well as Denise. I think I've answered your question to the best of my knowledge. If you want to know more about it, then I think you should ask a drilling consultant or geologist. And yes, I think you're right, said Denise. I think many people do confuse production equipment with a drilling rig, including experienced drilling engineers. And she copied and pasted the bit when she said, and when you've sobered up, you can tell me if you're on a rig or a platform because you've told me both. And you're a drilling engineer, an experienced drilling engineer who's been on the same rig in the same place for 15 months. And you're seriously telling me you don't know why you've drilling so many wells in the same place. Are you Are just a total idiot or are you lying to me? You aren't on an oil rig, are you? You've never been anywhere near one and I have to go out now. I've just seen the time. And so, of course, their relationship took a nosedive. You know, the crude oil is for business, he said, and we do have target every month. Yet you ask, why do we drill so many wells from one place? What do you expect me to answer you? 
Oh, sorry, I see where I confuse you. It was a typing error. I wanted to say 1.5 wills every month. Sorry, my bad. I expect you to answer me by telling me why you're drilling so many wells in one place. Don't they just collapse into each other? Oh, sorry, I see where I confuse you, he said. It was a typing error. Just repeating himself, I wanted to say 1.5 wells every month. Sorry, my bad. You don't expect me to answer such questions. The more the oil, the more the sales. And I think you should know that. I do expect you to answer such question, said Denise. And I'll ask again. Don't they just collapse into each other if you drill them all in the same place? You can ask a soccer player why the pitch is green, he replied. And they'll tell you because grass photosynthesizes, replied Denise. You can't, he said. Indeed I can, said Denise. I just did. Do you not know what photosynthesis is? I assume you don't. There's some questions that we can use our common sense, he said. So use yours, replied Denise. Tell me why wells don't collapse into each other if you drill them close to each other. It's obvious you aren't an educated man, and certainly not a drilling engineer. So do you want to tell me who you really are, or shall I guess? The cleaner, the janitor, the store man? That's not an answer, and that's not a business of a soccer player, he said. It's the correct factual answer, replied Denise. Those are artificial grass. So what are you saying? He replied. Artificial grass is green because they add green dye to the manufacturing process, <laughs> replied Denise. Sometimes, he said, your questions are childish. You really are a thick, dim idiot, aren't you? Replied Denise. You have one chance to prove to me you're real. One chance. I'll video call you. Now, if you refuse to answer, I'll know you're an idiot. You've started with offensive language. He said, Clue, how did Denise I know that anyway? And so, of course, she tried calling him. You're an adult, he said, and I expect to control your language, but rather you say things without manners. Now I know for certain you're a thick, stupid, idiotic Nigerian scammer. She said, go away, goodbye. Hello, well, he said. See, I knew I was right. Funny, are you think, he said. Idiot, are you think, she replied. So that was your impression about me all the while, but believe you, very wrong, he said. Go on, I dare you to call me and show off your impressive American accent, but you're too much of a coward to do that. Or what use will it be, he asked. Exactly, coward, said Denise, because I know you're a thick, stupid, idiotic scammer boy. I don't jump into conclusions without being sure, he said. Neither do I, replied Denise, and I know you're a thick, stupid, idiotic scammer boy. You're just being unhappy, using your past to judge me, he said. I don't need to use the past to judge, said Denise. I can use your very own thick, stupid, idiotic inability to know anything about the job you claim to be doing. At least choose a profession you understand. Street cleaner, thief. I guess maybe you're not real, he said, because you ask stupid questions multiple times. Scammer, replied Denise. Only fake a quick to judge, he said. I guess maybe you're not real, because I ask sensible questions multiple times. But you're too stupid to know the answer. Only fake don't even know about the job they claim to do. Hello, well, he said. I'm a drilling engineer, and only fools ask stupid questions. Anyway, said Denise, I've had enough of your brain-dead moronic conversation. Goodbye. You should learn manners, he said. You should get a job, replied Denise, and not try to steal money from people. You're just a thieving scumbag. The older you get, he said, I thought you should be learned. But rather, you act like a teenager, rude and mannerless. You can swear because it's in your nature. No, said Denise, it's you that acts like a teenager because you are a teenager. I guess that's the reason it's difficult for you to find a good man, he said. You always push them away. You think you're perfect. I can get a good man, said Denise. I don't want a thieving low-life scumbag. Why do you think anyone would want a thieving, thick, stupid, brain-dead scumbag like you? Maybe you're just deluded. Goodbye. You think the world revolves around your beauty, he said. Now that is funny, said Denise, but I appreciate that you still think I'm beautiful. How very flattering of you. Beauty without character, he said. Bring shame. Life is too short to be arguing with you or fighting. I pray God give you a sense of reasoning before jumping into conclusion. You're wrong about me and I've got nothing to prove to you. I think you ask questions blindly and expect to understand immediately. I've explained to you a couple of times 
This is an offshore work at the middle of the sea with lots of different company rigs. I told you we drill at least 1.5 wells every month. But you're asking me, why do we drill so many well? I said it's for production purposes, for sale. But you still keep asking me. So do you expect me to go out of point and give you unreasonable answer? Or you think oil well is like the local well? Oil well is like a borehole. You're just being stupid, asking relevant questions because you fill your mind with doubt with your past experience. You can also tell me why the letter Y has two branches and a long tail. You're not asking to learn, but rather you're asking to find flaws, even without the knowledge of engineering or drilling. But you feel you're right because of the stupid people you've met in the past. You believe me, you're the most stupid woman I've come in contact with. At 76 years, I expect you to do research or sometimes ask Google to clear your doubt. But rather, you choose to make a fool of yourself. Our man ran out of steam and disappeared, which was a shame. Well, maybe not. You've probably had enough of the argument, but he disappeared. And that was the end of Stephen Nisha. I hope you enjoyed this tale of yet another drilling engineer who has no idea what they're talking about. If you did, please like it. Please share it. Please comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in another video.